Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Maria. Please subscribe below so we can be YouTube friends. Today, I wanted to dissect a myth. And a myth goes something along these lines. The way someone acts towards you has nothing to do with you. In fact, it is part of their story and has everything to do with them and them alone. While I find this myth quite prevalent in the collective human consciousness, and why I be- why- while I believe that somebody's intentions when they're saying that to another human are very good, in other words, they come from a good place, from a place of trying to comfort someone, I find that this type of perspective actually enables and forces somebody or almost perpetuates these vicious cycles and these vicious loops because if the person never internalizes how their actions or their energy or their state or their way of being has an impact and literally reverberates all around the universe, all around the universe, and comes back to them in the form of events and happenings and people and and actions and activities and all of that. If the person doesn't internalize that, then they're going to keep doing the same thing that they have been doing and getting the same exact result. So let's dissect this myth and why it could be so dangerous. I am a big believer in the theory or in the fact that you are the scriptwriter, the director, the editor, and the actor in the movie of your life. In fact, from the standpoint of energy, um, over here you have uh, somewhere in the middle of your, um, like between your clavicle bones, you have a gland called a thymus. Um, And thymus is a projector gland uh, energetically or from the spiritual perspective. So what it does, it, it literally analyzes your vibration and projects forth a movie of your life right in front of you. So it projects forth your personal cell of the matrix that you interact with. And literally, based on the law of attraction, based on the law of reciprocity, the law of mirror neurons, and based on the fact that this universe is literally built according to your vibration, your individual vibration, to form and create experiences for you so that you can get better at something, so that you can have a particular experience or a learning. If we take that into account, that literally the universe operates according to the law of resonance, anything and everything that comes into your vicinity, into your point of vision, into your focus, has everything to do with your vibration, your energy, and potentially your shadow. Now, saying this is not the same thing. Please hear me. Saying this is not the same thing as saying someone is to blame for what is happening to them. It has nothing to do with blame. In fact, like I said, not to sound like a broken record, everything is a learning experience. Now, I know that in some of you, what I have just said has created a very strong emotion around, oh, there we go, another person blaming the victim. The victim is already having it hard. Now we have Maria blaming the victim again, and we're so done with victims being blamed, yada, yada, yada. Again, there's nothing about this theory, and there's nothing about this truth that has an interest in placing blame on anyone. But here is the deal. There is always something in your auric field. There is always something in your energy that is sending out signals out there. And based on those signals, based on your vibration, certain things come into your vicinity and certain things don't. So everything happens according to the law of resonance. There are no exceptions to this rule that I know of. Meaning, the signs that the universe shows you, the events that happen in your life, The people that you meet, how these people behave to you, what they tell you, what they don't tell you, what they say, what they admit to, all of it and more is a direct response to your vibration. Let us start dissecting certain examples because I know there is a lot of pushback on this and you truly guys believe, and some of you do, that there are instances where your happening has nothing to do with you or your lineage, right? Um, let's say somebody has um, an abusive parent, and this one is going to hit home for some of you. So you have this innocent kid that is being abused. Call it verbally, physically, emotionally, mentally, it doesn't matter. You know, 
any forms of abuse apply in this case. And so we may look at this child and be like, they are so perfect and they're so sweet and they're so innocent. So why? Oh my God, why? You know, how could they possibly align? Has nothing to do with them. How their mother, how their father behaves towards that kid has nothing to do with them. Well, I will tell you that it has everything to do with them, with their soul, with their higher self and the higher self's intentions for the path. So why do these things happen potentially? Now, there are many reasons why somebody could align with an aggressive or an abusive parent. One reason could be uh, because the higher self decided to have that experience. It's a very valid reason. If a higher self decides for you to have a particular experience, does it have something to do with you? You bet it does. It has everything to do with you. Another example here could be, okay, well, another reason that somebody could attract an abusive parent is because they have a very, very strong victim archetype or a very, very strong people-pleasing archetype. If you have a very strong people-pleasing archetype, that means that there is not a lot of you in a relationship, in any relationship, and there is a lot of all of these other people. So you are going to tend to attract people who are big and bold and very loud just because that is your vibration. It's like those are paired archetypes. A victim and an abuser are a paired archetype. So if you are strongly in one of the paired archetypes, you are going to attract another in the same way that the aggressor is always going to attract a victim. That is how the paired archetypes work. How else could you possibly um, attract an abusive parent? Call it in this instance, your mother is the abusive one. And again, we're looking at the kid and we're not seeing the victim archetype. What else could possibly be the reason? What else could possibly be the reason is that this particular person has a harder time, this soul has a harder time, a hard time with motherhood. When they practice motherhood, they experience various levels of distortions. And so in order for them to experience what it feels like to be a kid in a not an ideal situation, they may choose to have an aggressive mom, right? Because they're trying to play both ends of the spectrum. Or, which is also a very, very common, a very common um, instance here, is if a person is attracting an abusive parent of a particular gender, that means that they have an issue or a distortion um, when interacting with the energy, with that type of energy. In this case, a mother, right? If you have an abusive mother, most likely you have a distortion around femininity femininity within you and femininity outside of you, right? If you had a perfectly harmonious relationship with the feminine inside of you and the feminine outside of you, you could never, never, never in a million years align with an abusive mother or a mother that doesn't love you or a mother that is just absent from your life or a mother that doesn't love you the way that you want to be loved, right? Because your relationship with a parent of a particular gender has everything to do with your relationship to that gender. So it's almost like the person who is your mother or father don't really matter. We are looking for a pattern here, right? In other words, yes, having an abusive mother has everything to do with you. Even if you're two years old or three years old, doesn't really matter. Why? Because you are having that vibration of having an issue potentially around your femininity. The same thing holds if you are having or experiencing a tough relationship with your father. Whatever that tough relationship looks like, right? Abusive, um, it doesn't have to be abusive. It could be uh, just somebody who's prone to anger, somebody who doesn't let you express yourself, somebody that doesn't let you pursue your path, any version, like any form of distortion would always be a sign that there's something around your masculinity in yourself that you're not accepting or you're not vibing at. And that's why you are having this experience um, reflected to you in the outer world. Why? Not for you to carry the blame, not for you to cave in, Hug yourself and be like, I'm so powerless against this. It will never get better because I'm, it's my fault, my fault alone. That level of powerlessness is everything that I would like to avoid when I'm making content like this. Because you have the power. Don't you realize that if you are the projector, if you are the writer, the script writer, the director, the editor, uh, the actor in your own movie, that means you call the shots, right? So it's less about blame and more about accepting responsibility that every little picture you see around you, you wrote it with your energy. And that is a blessing. That is not a curse. 
I'll give you another example. Let's say that you are working on something and you just notice that life forever knocks you down. Like it's like you cannot get a break. It's always challenge. Everything, every day is a challenge. Every day is another problem. Every day is another issue to solve. Yada, yada, yada. Also a common pattern for some of you. What may be the reason? Because we may say and be like, this person is just unlucky. Or this person, like, we feel so bad for them because they have to work so hard. They have to work two times harder for them to get ahead in life. And they, they just have to really try harder than anybody we know. And we may be like, okay, well, we don't see that there is anything wrong with them. So why is this, you know, situation happening with them? Again, your universe responds to your vibration. Your universe responds to your emanation. For a lot of people who are in a warrior stance, like always ready to fight, always ready with their sword energetically, right? Like always ready to pounce, their universe is going to be a little bit hostile. Their universe is going to be like, wow, you want to be in the warrior stance? No problem. We're going to give you a rival to fight. And so if your vibration towards the universe is you're a warrior, then the universe is going to give you an adversary to fight. Does it have to be that way? Absolutely not. So if you choose to integrate your warrior, and if you choose to lead with another archetype, you will notice your life transform. Same way, let's say somebody who is a martyr, or let's say somebody who's an underdog, right? Like um, another form of victim. In, in, my, in my mind, when I think about a victim, there are many forms of a victim. A martyr is one way of, of, of that archetype playing out. An underdog is another way. Right, because it's like, ooh, the world is so much bigger than me, and who who is this little me? You know, um, and again, it's adversity, and those types of archetypes they invite uh, adversity. Why? Because the universe is trying to make you whole. The universe is trying to show you that no, actually, like here is the mirror. Look at yourself. Do you see that you're not giving yourself enough credit? Do you see that you're not listening to your own? story inside of you, that you're not giving yourself permission to go after things, or maybe you're as an underdog, maybe you're not giving yourself permission to just get have it easy. And again, you're in that warrior stance and fighting for every single inch of progress, right? Again, once you change your own core vibration, things around you change, right? So your universe and how people act towards you has everything to do with you. And that is an empowering thought because it has, if it has everything to do with you, that means that you can really impact change. That means that you can rewrite your life. You can shift your life very quickly and very easily. And that is what I want you to walk away with from this video. Now, one last thing. So how do you start fixing this? How do you start looking at things broader? A couple of things and a couple of tips, right? Because again, the whole blame game doesn't really work. A, you always want to be looking for a pattern, like a bigger pattern. It helps to connect to your higher self. It helps to literally, in a meditative state, gain perspective. So go up through your crown, like shooting up through your crown. And then um, essentially your higher self is upstairs, like in a circular chamber is how I like to think about it. Of course, your higher self can be anywhere. But it's really important when you're connecting to your higher self to merge your chakras, starting from the top, the crown, and then going down. So you merge their crown and your crown, their third eye and your third eye. You go uh, top to bottom. And then usually if you did everything right, the energy is going to start rising up from bottom to top. It, it, want, it always wants to come upstairs. And so from the perspective of your higher self, you can ask your higher self, okay, why, why do I have this pattern? What is this pattern trying to show me? What is the broader story here? Right? So that's one. That is if you're talking about events, right? Like, where is the distortion? What is it, you know, like, is the, um, that's the question you have to ask your higher, higher self. Where is the distortion in me that I'm attracting this thing? If we're talking about a particular person that you have a relationship with and they're acting a certain way towards you or not acting a certain way towards you, that makes you feel hurt, uneasy, whatever that is. I find that usually if somebody's causing a really, really strong emotion in you, it is a past life connection. So either they are triggering the same thing in this lifetime that they triggered in you some other lifetime ago in a past life, or somebody in your past life pushed the same buttons on you 
And so in this lifetime, this new person is pushing those same buttons and you're reacting in the exact same way that, they used, that you used to react. I'll give you a quick example. Say in a past life, you were working with somebody and you were friends with them. Uh, or you were, yeah, somehow together in, like, in the same group of friends. And they really betrayed you. And they really backstabbed you. And they really did all of these aw awful things. And there was a falling out. In this lifetime, A, you may feel really, really close to them even as you meet them. You're like, oh, we're such soulmates. You know, I get you. It feels like it's like this remembrance, right? It's there. But at the same time, that person may trigger you like nobody else. Like they may say something really, really silly or something that's really, really, I don't know, has nothing to do with um, just something, call it um, mundane. So they say something mundane. All of a sudden it triggers you into like from it just gets you going from zero to 100 all of a sudden you're mad or angry or something it is because the situation may be triggering something from a past life with this particular person when they betrayed you so it's almost like because that is the vibration and the imprint that the two of your auric fields when they meet together have right so again certain things get triggered when you meet people right it's almost like they created a a crack in you and you created a crack in them and when the two cracks attract all of a sudden it's like whoa, like earthquake. And so because of that, you may be acting or they may be acting disproportionately to the happening because they have memories and you have memories and they're all in the subconscious. So if you're trying to fix this is one of the things that I recommend doing is a past life regression. At one point, um, I, I had a video um, I did a meditation about a past life regression, but there are many on YouTube that you can do past life regressions. So definitely look into the pattern. And you may either look into the past lives that you lived with that person, or you may ask the universe to align you with a life that has the same exact pattern that you're working through right now. Both are equally good in terms of providing insight, in, in terms of showing you a, a, a better and a different perspective. So in other words, if someone or something is in your life and you are paying attention to the happening, and especially if that impacts you on a deep, deep level, mentally, emotionally, physically, or otherwise, energetically, for instance, it has everything to do with you, which doesn't mean that you're the one who carries the blame, but it means that you are the one in charge and you can change it. Thank you for sticking around. I'm sending you a big virtual hug. Please let me know in the comments how you feel about this, if you agree or if you disagree. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, loves.